Okay, uh, thank you very much. I want first to thank the organizers, especially Anapu, because to invite me here. It's a pleasure to be in Bangalore and in India and in the Institute. And uh, also thank you everybody for coming for, to the school and, and to these uh, lectures. I will try in these three lectures to give you a, a kind of a personal, but also I will cover uh, work for other people, especially from uh, Suri <laughs> as well. And uh, um, a, 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 a view of uh, the last uh, research on, well, sorry, first word, <laughs> typo in the first word. I hope there will not be so many. So uh, about thermodynamics of information. You have the outline. I w I've changed a little bit the outline because I, uh, writing the notes, I realized that uh, 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 non equilibrium free energy is a concept that uh, deserves a section by itself. So uh, I split these two in three, and now we have 10 points. The outline is uh, an updated ver version of the outline, is in, uh, I, I send it to uh, Anna. And it is in the, there is a web page for the, for the students. No? And also I, I, you have an, a set of exercises that you can do these days and uh, tomorrow we will have a tutorial. So in the tutorial we can uh, discuss the exercises <coughs> and the idea is that you do the exercises this afternoon or in, in your spare time and then we will discuss in the session. And there you have as well, I put, uh, will you be able to put the, the, the link to the Dropbox, the Dropbox folder? There is a Dropbox folder with some, with, with the transparencies and, the, and my notes, handwritten notes, and, um, and also some papers that are useful to do the exercises or to, or to explore more about all these subjects. Okay, so, um, the, the uh, first session, these are sections that uh, we will try to cover today up to the, uh, the first uh, four ones, which is a little bit of a history of why information, when information enter into thermodynamics and why it's a problem or why it is a, something that has thermodynamic consequences or what is the relationship between, uh, between thermodynamics and information. And the, and the whole story started with Maxwell Devon and we will review a little bit the, the history. And then the course starts here, uh, which uh, I, first I will assume that you only have some knowledge, I mean, good knowledge about equilibrium statistical physics and quantum physics, although the course will be mostly classical thermodynamics and classical information theory. But, uh, but I will explain, the, it will be rather self-contained in the sense that I will, I will explain the basic concepts before that the mutual information, channel information, all this stuff. I don't, maybe for some of you it's very uh, trivial or very well known, but uh, well, if, if everybody agrees, we can skip this, but this is some basic concepts on uh, information theory, and then this uh, non-equilibrium free energy, and then we start with the information and the second law. Tomorrow, we will go from here to, uh, um, from five to uh, seven, and then the three last points will be on, um, on Wednesday. And also I will show you some, uh, like, uh, although I said that this is a personal view of the subject, or I mean, not a personal, but, uh, uh, well, everything is personal, no, when you give a course. But uh, uh, the, I, I have to say from the beginning that there is a kind of, not everybody in the field, not even collab close collaborators agree with what is information and what is the role of information. For instance, I've worked a lot with uh, Takahiro Sagawa and Jordan Horowitz, and uh, Massimiliano Esposito, each one has a different view of what is information. And uh, at the end of the course, this is a question that it will be open for you. So what, what do you think, what is the nature of information? And, uh, and then uh, along the course, I will discuss like these different uh, uh, ways of looking at information in, in thermodynamics. Okay, so you can, of course, interrupt me every time you like, if you don't understand something or whatever. And part of the lectures will be uh, with the slides, I, I think I said it, and, and a lot of it will be in the blackboard, so I will do blackboard. And in the, the things in the blackboard are 
handwritten, and you can, you can look at it in the Dropbox uh, folder. OK, so let's start with uh, the history. And uh, this is the outline of this section. This is, uh, so we start with the Maxwell daemon. I guess uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, this uh, idea that um, if you have information about the system, then you can do better in terms of extracting energy from thermal baths and things like that, or even defeating the second law. Uh, this idea comes back to uh, Maxwell in a letter to Tite, a uh, friend of him, uh, 1868. It's interesting that uh, the, the, um, the Maxwell uh, velo distribution for velocities in the a, in a ideal gas was like three, three years or two years before this date. And uh, I, I, I think that Maxwell immediately, when he derived his uh, Maxwell distribution for velocities, immediately uh, understood that uh, uh, in a cold gas you have, uh, you have in a cold gas you have fast particles and slow particles, and the, the, the same in a hot gas. And the difference between hot and cold is just the average. But you have fluctuations around this average. And these fluctuations can be used to transfer particles, to transfer uh, uh, energy from the cold to the hot, defeating the second law. So this is the, the letter that uh, if you have, I guess everybody is familiar with this. If, if, you, if you have uh, two gases, one is hot uh, and, and the other is cold, uh, then if you have some intelligent being here uh, operating a wall, uh, the, this demon can uh, let pass particles with, uh, with high energy, with high, high speed, from the cold to the uh, hot. And in such a way, uh, the demon will uh, transfer hot heat from cold to hot in, in defeating the second law. Or in, in, in <coughs> the second law doesn't allow you this task. So um, this is how he described it, no? Uh, being who knows the path and velocities. Of course, you, know, you have to know the path. So this is when information enters into the problem. You have to know to open the door in the, in the appropriate uh, moment. And, um, and the hot system uh, gets hotter, the cold colder, without the need of any work. Only the intelligence of a very observant and neat fingered is uh, the 19th century English style neat fingered being as has been employed. So um, this is the idea that uh, with info information is a thermodynamic resource in the sense that uh, you can do things that you cannot do without information. And of course, this, this uh, uh, prompts immediately a problem of uh, uh, what is the nature of the second law. First, it's a, it's a probabilistic nature. Second, it's objective. It is objective or subjective. It depends on what on, on, the, on, on us, on, on what we know, or it's an objective. Uh, property of nature. This type of things are the, the problems behind it. So in the, in, uh, there are, uh, in the literature, you can find different Maxwell demon. There is the, the, the original uh, demon by Maxwell, which is a, what uh, is a, we call temperature Maxwell demon, and, and transfer heat from cold to hot. And the information that the demon needs is just the, the, is the position and the speed, because it, it needs to know if a particle is fast to open the door or close the door. But uh, uh, there is another simple version of the demon, which is uh, the pressure Maxwell demon. So uh, if you have just a door, and, and you will open the door when the particle comes from, from, uh, uh, from uh, left to right, and close the door when it goes from right to left, then uh, you see immediately that you are accumulating particles in the right part. This is called a pressure demon, and it also uh, uh, defeats the second law, because once you have a, a high density here and a low density here, you can put a piston and extract work from the thermal bath if this is in contact with the thermal bath. So in both cases, you can, uh, you can um, uh, extract work. And this is simpler. Uh, actually, for this, you, not, you don't really need to know the, the speed of the particle, well, maybe the, the sign of the, of, the, of the velocity, just to open when it is coming. But it's, it's just uh, you need only the, the position, and it is actually a, a simple rectifier. This, uh, this actually uh, 
um, inspire people to uh, really consider a Maxwell Demon just, just a system where you have some, uh, some process that occurs in one direction and in the other direction is forbidden somehow. Uh, if you think of, of this Maxwell Demon, it's just uh, letting the particles to go in one direction, but uh, avoiding particles to go in the opposite direction. Uh, and some people consider that this is a, a Maxwell demon, uh, and um, even uh, the group of David Leake in, uh, in, in Edinburgh, they made a, 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 an experimental paper with a, a, chemi uh, it's a chemical Maxwell demon, and it was something like that, something that uh, particles could, could jump from one side to the other, but not the other way around. And, um, some people even think that uh, or, or propose that any, any system where you have two states and there is a, uh, an, uh, you know that when you have two states in a physical system, you have to obey detailed balance and somehow this demon is like uh, breaking detailed balance because here, well, energy here is the same in the left or in the right container. So the two uh, rates to go from left to right or right, right to left will be equal, should be equal, but the demon breaks this, this uh, 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 detailed balance. So some people like Esposito and Schaller has, uh, uh, have a, a, a nice paper just considering, uh, the pot describing demons just by uh, uh, using this breaking of detailed balance. I don't know if you are familiar with detailed balance, but this is a, uh, everybody is familiar with detailed balance? This, this is just a, a, a condition that uh, you, you have to, when you have a, a system, a physical system with energy, some energy here, some energy here, the rate to go from, the, the, the probability to go from I to J divided by, sorry, this is I to J and this is J to I. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, you have to switch this one. Uh, the, pro, the, ra the ratio of the two probabilities is, is the exponential of minus beta, delta A. So uh, this is a, a, another view of a Maxwell demon. I told you that I will give you different uh, views of information and Maxwell demons, and this is one that I don't, uh, I don't uh, agree so much with my good friend, Massimiliano Esposito, but uh, it, they did, an, it, I don't believe that a Maxwell demon is just a, this simple, breaking of detail balance, because you can break detail balance with many other things. In biology, you can, with ATP, you can break detail balance in some, and this is the, 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 the way motors work. I don't know if Suri will tell, tell, tell us about motors or something, but uh, no. But, uh, well, uh, I, 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 I give you this, uh, but uh, as I said, I think Maxwell demons are more than that. They need, uh, you have to include this information acquisition uh, when you talk about the Maxwell demons. And, um, okay, after Maxwell, uh, it came in, this is, uh, Maxwell is 19th century, and then Sillar uh, wrote a, a very important paper in 1912, and uh, he introduced uh, the Sillar engine, which is a kind of a, a simpler, uh, um, form of the Maxwell demon, but simpler in a very specific way, not, not like the, the pressure Maxwell demon. This is simpler because it's very clear what is the information you acquire, what is, what is, uh, is a piece of information. Actually, we will see that it is a bit of information, that you, what you acquire. And then uh, it's very clear what is the trade-off between information and work. And this is how the Sillar engine works. Actually, it's simpler conceptually but it is also a little bit harder for physicists to understand because it involves a, a kind of a, a, a subtle concepts like the concept of a single particle, a single particle gas. So you have a container with a single particle uh, and the container is in, in contact or surrounded by a bath at temperature T. You can imagine this as a, a particle that uh, every time it uh, collides with the walls, uh, it goes out from the collision with a Maxwellian distribution because you can think that the wall is at temperature T and then in the collision there is some interaction with the wall that at the end thermalizes the particle. What is thermalizing the particle is 
uh, given the particle of velocity, which is the velocity of, given by the Maxwell distribution, okay? So uh, anyway, you have something here that thermalizes the particle all the time, and the particle lives in this box of volume V. And then what you do is the following, you insert a piston. It's possible to prove that uh, this insertion of the piston doesn't require any work. In classical uh, mechanics, not in quantum mechanics, in quantum mechanics, uh, this, is, uh, this requires always a work because essentially you are changing the, the, the eigenstates of, even if you do it very slowly, you are changing the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. But in classical mechanics, you can do this without any work, so you can insert the piston. And then you let the, the, this is a piston, so you can let this expand. And uh, you know it's an expansion, and in an expansion you get some work from the, from the particle. Of course, uh, physically it's a little bit difficult to see, but it is a, you can imagine that uh, the particle uh, collides with the piston and gives some energy to the piston, and then gets, uh, uh, the, the velocity uh, gets uh, lower, but uh, it uh, recovers this velocity when, when, when it interacts with the thermal buff through the walls. So you have the, 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 the expansion uh, uh, performs some work. This means it gives energy to some external uh, uh, agent which is operating the, the, wall, the piston, and this energy comes from the thermal path. I will, I will give details in a moment. Then you remove, you remove the, the piston and you go back to the initial state. And as I said before, uh, uh, the system, the engine, is in contact with a thermal bath, which is every time the particle collides, there is an exchange of energy with the thermal bath, and also with some external agent that uh, the, you can compress or you can extract or, or you can expand the gas and you also transfer energy between the particle and the piston and the, 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 the agent that operates the, the piston. Uh, what is this, this work? Well, the work that we extract in the expansion, and this is what you have to, you, you, you have, to have a, a little bit of faith. I will, I will explain this uh, in, in, uh, in a moment in the next slide. But, uh, uh, Believe me, if I tell you that in average you can use the, the, the equation of the ideal gas, well, what is one a single particle is ideal. The ideal means that particles don't have interaction, so here you have a single particle, so there is no doubt that uh, is an ideal gas. But the pressure is, you can, you can think of the pressure as, as given by temperature and volume. Of course, this is a, the, the, the pressure here it has a, uh, is difficult to imagine because it has a, uh, it, it, is, it is because of collisions, but I will show you in a moment that uh, I will convince you that this is correct. And if you uh, do this uh, simple calculation of the work done by the a single particle gas in this expansion from an initial volume to a final volume, the work that you extract is this one. And here, because we go from half volume to whole volume, one, uh, the work extracted is kT log two, which is bigger than zero. Uh, this is work that you extract from the, from the reservoir, from the thermal bath. Eh? So uh, in this uh, device, uh, breaks the second law, or defeats the second law in this, because the second law in the, in the I think it's the Kelvin-Planck statement, says that you can never, extract energy from a single thermal bath in a cycle. If you do this, you have a perpetuum mobile of the second kind. You could, uh, you could extract energy from, from, from the air here or from the water in the sea, and you will, have, you will solve all the energy problems of the world. This is uh, the second law uh, uh, forbids completely this possibility. By the way, instead of, uh, of extracting work along the, the course, we will use the typical uh, co uh, convention for science uh, in thermodynamics, which tells you that uh, we will talk about the work done on the system. So uh, uh, W for us will be all the time, and Q, W and Q will be energy coming to the system. Heat will be the energy coming from the thermal bath, 
and work the energy coming from the, from the external agent. And the extracted work, of course, is minus uh, the work done. So when we find uh, negative work, this means that we are extracting work. And when we find positive work, this means that we are doing work on the system. This will be, and if I want to highlight the, the work extracted, then I will use this, uh, this notation, work extracted, which is very, Okay, so here, uh, well, this, is, this, is, uh, uh, this was uh, very um, important in the history of, of, of thermodynamics of information, mainly because the Maxwell demon is a, is a, is a nice uh, 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 system, but you can see that it's, it's very difficult to analyze uh, from a theoretical point of view, because first you need the information of particles, and this is a continuous variable, know the position and the velocity. So uh, you can ask, how much information do I need? Do I need the information? If, I, if I'm the demo and I'm, I'm, this is my gate, do I need the information of, the, of all the particles or only the, 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 the ones that can really uh, cross the, the wall? It's, it's, it's a, a system which is difficult to, to analyze from a, uh, from a theoretical point of view, whereas the Steeler engine is very clear, it's very neat. It's, uh, you need only to measure something, well, ah, sorry, uh, I forget to say, of course, uh, that to, to do this, this expansion, you need to measure where, where the particle is. Otherwise, uh, you cannot do the reversible expansion. So here it's very neat that you need only to measure something that can be re uh, left, right, and also, it's very, it's very simple to calculate how much work you can get from this measurement. So here you have uh, a binary measurement, uh, left, right, which uh, is one half probability, one half to be here or here. And I guess you know that this is one bit of information. So the CDR engine tells you, even, my, even before Shannon came with the definition of the bit and the uh, entropy, uh, Sila found that uh, one bit of information allows you to extract KT log two from the thermal bath, which is a kind of quantification of, I said before, information is a, is a thermodynamic resource. The Sila engine uh, clarifies or quantifies this resource. This tells you that one bit is one KT log two, which is the, the great, uh, uh, um, um, achievement of the Sealer engine. But here, uh, as I said before, there are many things that uh, are not clear. What is the pressure? Why can't we use this? If, if, uh, what, why do I need the, the measurement? Some people tell us, well, if, if, the, if the piston starts to move, you just wait a little bit and see if, if it is moving, and then you, uh, uh, you, you already know. because. You need the, the, the measurement to, me, to, to implement the reversible expansion. You know a reversible expansion is not like a free expansion. A free expansion of a gas, you have a piston, and, and if the piston doesn't, if you don't put any force in the piston, there is a free expansion, and this is irreversible. You don't get work. To get work, you need to, to exert a force against, against, the, 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 against the piston. So this is why you need the measurement. You need the measurement to, to put some force that, uh, balance the, the pressure and then you can, you can uh, in the expansion, you can get the, the, the work. Uh, but as I said before, there are many uh, weak points, or at least for people working on a statistical physics, you can be suspicious about first, why use the ideal gas? Uh, this is a very random thing, so can we do this thing? Can we, uh, 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 is, is this reliable, this equation? Second, why do I need the measurement and so on? I, 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 uh, uh, yeah, I have to do some work. And in the next slide. Uh, so, so why is the measurement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you what is measurement. Uh, I, I, uh, to understand all these issues, I, I prepared a, a kind of ver version of the Sealer engine, which is uh, uh, with, a uh, with many engines. Because when you have something stochastic like this, like this is very stochastic, 
the best thing to smooth things and to understand things is to use a co an ensemble of those. Maybe after, after the next slide you will see. So, uh, Information that you need is when you are inserting the. No, you insert the piston. In this sense, you can do it blindly. You insert the piston, and then you go and measure where the particle is, left, right. And once. And when it reaches the end, that is not. And when it reaches the end, you already got this all this work. But when you have when you have put it back. And then you you remove it, and then you put it back. No, but will so detecting whether the partition or the piston reaches the end, that is, that is not an No, you have to do it before, because before, if, if for this expansion to occur reversibly, and irreversibly, this means that you can, uh, when you use this equation, this means that the system is in equilibrium. What means in equilibrium? That this is very slow, and, and the system is always, in every collision, you, the system is in equilibrium. So the system is always giving you energy, giving energy to the piston, and extracting energy from the thermal bath. And to do this, you need to uh, really put, otherwise, if you don't put any force, this will be a collision, and, and, and the, 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 the piston will accelerate in collisions, and then uh, this will be a completely free expansion with no work, okay? So, but uh, uh, to make it a little bit more clear, I, I prepared this, this, uh, this setup, which is uh, uh, many, many stellar engines. <coughs> This is, uh, uh, you have many of those, and the particle can be anywhere, left or right, and now you insert pistons in, the, in all those. You can do it, ide ideally you can do it with zero work. Uh, you, you insert pistons like that. And, and you see, if you want, now, with many, uh, I, I put now, uh, well, uh, I, can, I can make a, I can join all the pistons, and you see that if, if, if I put, if all the pistons are connected, the pressure is zero. The pressure now, because I have many, now the pressure is a, is a, is a quantity which is well uh, described by thermodynamics, but the pressure is zero. The pressure here is zero, because I have as many in the left and as in the right. So, but if now suppose that I measure in any, any, in any Zillar engine I measure, where are they? And then I turn those which are, I align all of them. But to do this, I need to measure. Because otherwise I cannot put all the particles in the left. So I, can, I need to measure just to align all those. And now, yeah, I have a macroscopic, if you like, a macroscopic pressure towards the right. And I can use this pressure to uh, operate an engine, even a macroscopic engine, if you like. And the work now, uh, I have a macroscopic pressure. This pressure is KT, is the ideal gas, and the number of motors here. And then I can extract all this work. And you see, I have to make N measurements. So I, in my measurement, I get n bits of information, and from n bits of information, I get kt log two. So again, one bit, one kt log two, one kt log two. And this is a, this is for people working in statistical physics. This is much more clear, in the sense that there is no uh, everything. Uh, this pressure is macroscopic. Is uh, uh, this work is okay? I can use this work to lift uh, uh, lift a weight or whatever. And uh, I think here is more clear what is the role of the measurement is to align all the all the particles. So do you also reverse the velocity? Huh? How do you perform this turning? Well, I just uh, this this is just uh, uh, this this flipped. You need you, well. You can I you can do it. I, I don't know. This is a, a ideal thing, but. Uh, you don't need to reverse velocity. So you can do this with this step, no? You mean this step? Or what, which one? Moving particles with your sort Yeah, you can, uh, well, I, I, I represent it like that, but you can, of, of course, do it as well. Uh, uh, 
uh, engineering the, the, the connection between the two. Or uh, it's, an, I mean, this is, you don't have to physically turn the container. Although you could do it, you can turn a container with zero, with zero, uh, with zero work as well. Huh? You don't need to do it. Um, but I can imagine that this is, a, if, for instance, if you do this with Brownian particles and these are optical traps and things like that, uh, you have ways of engineering this. In, the, the, the important point here, uh, for this you have to uh, still be comfortable with idealization. Idealization is that uh, uh, every, uh, the only step that really uh, 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 is exerting a force is the, is the expansion. And the rest of the steps, there are no, uh, uh, an intrinsic energy or uh, an avoidable energy or an avoidable work that uh, you have to do to do all these steps. This is, there is no limitation. You can do it as, 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 with as low energy as you like, if you, yeah. Okay, so uh, here is the, um, uh, he, this is just to understand the Zillar engine, but uh, we will work all the time along the course with the original Zillar engine, which is a single gas, a single particle gas, and a piston, and you insert the piston, and you have to move it, and so on, and so on. This is just for those who really uh, want to understand it. So once you, you believe this, you, uh, uh, once, once you believe this story, uh, we will work with this, these formulas all the time. We will apply ideal gas theory to the single particle gases and so on. Actually, you have an exercise, exercise number two, where you have to do the same, the Zillar engine, but suppose that when you have, when you measure, you, you have an error. Your measurement apparatus have some noise, and sometimes you measure left and the particle is in right, and the other way around. This is a, a exercise number two that you have to do this afternoon, hopefully. Okay, so um, let's continue. If you if you are still suspicious about the Zillar engine, I have to tell you that the Zillar engine can be implemented with many other physical systems. You have the original proposed, uh, the original idea of Zillar, which is one particle gas and a piston. But you can do it with Brownian particles. For instance, if you have a Brownian particle here in the potential and you modify the potentials, and actually this has been done in, in, the, in the lab with optical traps. So you have, you have a single well and then you, uh, move the, you change your potential to have two wells. And now you, you measure where the, in which well the particle is. And if the particle is here, you do the following protocol you uh, decrease this guy and then uh, remove this, this well and go back to the original position. When you do this, and if, and if the particle is in the left, you do the symmetric, pro I mean, you do a similar protocol, but the mirror image of this protocol. When you do this, you can prove that you get KT log two you, you, uh, when you manipulate the potential, you, you do some work. Sometimes if you want to increase the energy, if you want to increase the potential energy, like, like, like for instance, here, you have increased the potential energy, so you do work, but here, uh, if, here you extract some work, no? Because you do, you, uh, the, the energy of the particle gets lower, and then this, is, this energy is because it's, 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 you, tau is the time, it's because this, this picture is from a paper, from this paper and, and we, tau was important for that discussion. It's, it's the, you can do it more reversibly or, or less reversibly. This is, this, you get KT log two and you do this very slowly. And if you do it fast, then you get less than, uh, actually if you do it very fast, you get nothing. So uh, this is another important point of the Stellar engines, how reversibly you can do it. And we will discuss this tomorrow, probably. Okay? And... What about the first stage? Huh? 
so amount of work extracted in that st third stage there uh, doesn't it depend on how much you reduce the potential no here if you do this slowly it doesn't matter and if this barrier is high enough uh, you can see this in the paper. The only condition here is that you do it much slower than the uh, relaxation time in, this, in the wells and much faster than the uh, transition time between two wells. If you are in this regime, you get KT log 2. We will uh, go to this. Yeah, you get KT log 2. It doesn't matter the, the actually uh, you can do it with many other systems. Uh, for instance, uh, you can do it with a, with a magnet or an easy model. So suppose that you have you have an easy model. I guess you are familiar with the easy model. You have two parameters: the the coupling between the spins and the field. And you start with zero field and zero coupling, which means that every spin is independent from each other. So you have a disorder phase, which is all the spins are randomly orientated up or down. Now you increase the coupling beyond the critical point, and you know that the, 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 the easy model, the magnetization gets, usually we see this plot uh, for, with temperature, but with coupling, you can, you can, the magnetization in the critical coupling makes something like that. So the system orders. Now, now if you do the following, you go, to put a field, and here you have to measure, and you measure if, if the, you know that when, when the system crosses the critical point, uh, the system cho chooses between uh, up uh, positive neg magnetization or negative magnetization, and this is a random choice. Uh, well, you have seen all these pictures with the easy model that it depends on, by chance, some, some domain gets bigger and bigger, and then you get so you measure, if you are here or here, and if you are positive, you put a positive field, and if you are negative, you put a negative field, and then uh, you go back, you, you, you uh, switch off the coupling, and then you switch off the field. And in this, uh, in this uh, protocol, you can prove that you get KT log 2 as well. So um, you see that um, uh, they are very different in nature, all these, uh, all these uh, 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 examples. And, but in all of them, you have a binary measurement, uh, left, right, left, right, up, down, one bit of information. And you get k of 2 in the 3. And it doesn't matter if the protocol, you can even change the protocols here instead of, uh, uh, this is in the, the, for the easy model, this is uh, in the space J, B, this is like, this is like uh, uh, going from here to here. It's like a, it's like a cycle. But you can do the cycle in many other times. As far as you cross the critical point in one direction and you go back, avoiding the critical point, you get this KT log 2 as well. Huh? You can do, you can prove this, uh, that you get KT log 2, you can prove it uh, analytically uh, for the quasi-static case, for the quasi-static case. And, and you see, there is, a, 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 all these three share something, which is the following. The following is, the, the, the first thing that they share is that they, you have a system that has a choice of left, right, up, down, etc. cetera. You, you measure this choice and you go back using this information, your protocol here from here to there uses this information. And actually you can show that for any system that has a symmetry breaking, this is a symmetry breaking. For any system that has a symmetry breaking, you have a symmetry breaking, you measure what is the choice that the system has uh, uh, taken and then you go back this, this information allows you to go back to the initial point, avoiding the critical point. So you go through the critical point and you go back avoiding the critical point. And if you do this, and it doesn't matter if it is a particle or a gas or whatever, 
you get kt log 2 of, of work. Notice all, as well that you don't even need that the information is microscopic. The information could be macroscopic, like this one. Here is microscopic, but it could be macroscopic. The only thing you need is that the information, well, there is no, no. We'll go into this uh, the last day, Wednesday. Uh, it's, any other question with that? No. Okay. Uh, something that also, uh, it, it, here is a, li it's a bit of history, but it's like an introduction to the course that things that I hope you will understand better after the three lect lectures. But uh, something that uh, uh, surprised at the very beginning when you do this type of things is that you have a, you have a macroscopic system in this case, and, and you have a kind of a, a thermodynamic cycle or process, if you like. And it, it, we know from thermodynamics that if you have a, and from a statistical physics, that if you have a quasi-static process, actually I will show this formula in, 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 in the following, uh, you have this, this, uh, this equation that the final and the initial, the work is the, the final free energy, this is free energy, sorry, the free energy change. And because it's a cycle, the free energy should be zero. What is the, the problem here? What is wrong with this formula if I get kt log 2? Well, is that here in this cycle, not, the system is not really at equilibrium, at global equilibrium. When the system goes to one of these phases, it is a kind of a, a peculiar state which is not, is locally in equilibrium, but what we call a restricted equilibrium, but not in equilibrium. This is just an advance of something that we will see in tomo tomorrow. Okay, so to end the story, uh, 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 this was, CIRA was 1912, and now uh, there were uh, uh, mm, some people trying to uh, restore the validity of the second law. Uh, people, and most people thought that the measurement, of course people think that uh, you cannot defeat the second law, so the Silar engine must have some uh, cost that it's hidden, and, uh, and people th thought that the cost is the measurement. So Leon Briouin uh, made some papers on that, trying to uh, calculate if uh, measurement costs you something, if you have to do work to uh, measure, and he found that in some situations you have to do work, and, um, and this work is also, even in, in, in real in calculations, is bigger than k log 2, so he, he, he uh, concluded that, um, and people thought at that time that uh, uh, measuring something uh, uh, costs you some, you have to do some work to measure. But then uh, Landauer and Bennett came and, and they uh, found an alternative solution. And uh, the solution, uh, Bennett's solution is based on Landauer's principle that I don't know if you are familiar with this. Landauer's principle, it means that uh, when you uh, er erase something, I will show you why this, is, this has to do with the Maxwell demon, but Landauer's principle tells you that uh, if you have to, if you want to erase information, suppose you have some uh, memory that can be in zero or one, like a memory in a hard drive, and, uh, and you erase in, in this specific way. You, uh, you, uh, uh, go, you drive zero to zero and one to zero, so both states, you map both states into zero. This is a process, if the memory is a physical device, you have a process that has to transform uh, every initial state here into a final state here, or every initial state here uh, into a final state here. So you see that if this is the phase space, uh, and, uh, and there is a region with zero and a region that represents zero and, and another region that represents one in the memory, uh, the, this process, which is a physical process because this is a physical system, uh, is such that the available phase space shrinks by a factor two if the two states are equivalent, which we will assume. So in this condition, Landauer's realized that uh, if you have a, 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 a volume in phase space that shrinks by two, this must be compensated by some, uh, an increase of phase space volume in, an, in the environment, 
which means an increase of entropy in the environment. This is, this is a consequence either of Liouville theorem and or the second law. Liouville theorem tells you that the volume in phase space must be constant and the second law tells you that the entropy, which is essentially the volume in phase space, must be, cannot decrease. So uh, in, in any case, this must be compensated by an increase of phase space volume in the surroundings. So to, uh, to compensate this, a heat KT log two must be dissipated. So uh, Landauer's found a new relationship between information and thermodynamics, which is that when you erase in this specific uh, 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 way, you have to dissipate a heat KT log two. And this is the famous Landauer's principle that maybe you have heard about. I have to say that there are many confusion with uh, Landauer's principle because people think that uh, erasure is a re irreversible process in the thermodynamic sense, but this is not true. When you do this, you do it uh, reversibly. Thermodynamically, uh, it's thermodynamically reversible. Huh? If you, as I said before, there are many confusion. Even in papers, you can still read that uh, the restore to zero process is irreversible. It's not true. It's reversible. You can do the other way. You can do the other way around. This is like a compression of a gas, and you uh, you uh, uh, you um, dissipate heat. But this this heat dissipation is just to compensate the entropy reduction in the gas. So the total entropy is zero. The total entropy in the world, in the universe, the change is zero. So you can, you can invert this process if you like. You can invert this process if you like. Thermodynamically. Yeah. Even you have, uh, uh, with Landauer and Bennett, uh, there are some misconceptions. This is the first one. Uh, people think that logical irreversibility, the logical irreversibility means that uh, you cannot, from the input, uh, uh, from the output, you cannot go back to the input. Like here, you, the output is zero, and the input can be zero, one, or this logical gate, if you like. This is uh, uh, another example. You go from here to here, this to here, this to here. Any map between um, binary, uh, any binary function which is uh, logically reversible, which you cannot invert, uh, from the output, you cannot get in a equal way the, the input. It's called logical irreversibility. F many times you can read that logical irreversibility implies thermo thermodynamic irreversibility. This is not true. This is not true. Logical irreversibility means heat, dissipated heat, but it's thermodynamically reversible. Okay, uh, Bennett applied this to uh, the Maxwell demon, and he realized, okay, if you have Landauer principle, Landauer means that you have to, if you mess, if you erase, you have to, dis to do work and dissipate heat, um, then this is the solution. The Silar engine, the, you have the demon, you have your Silar engine, the demon measures, and do all the things that we have studied, but to go really back, the whole thing, to go really back to the initial state, the demon must erase the outcome of the measurement because otherwise it's, 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 it's accumulating bits in a memory. So to really have a cycle, you need to uh, restore to zero to your initial state. So uh, if you include the demon in your description, and this is a, a figure by, uh, Paul Fan, in, uh, there is, I will give you the reference in a moment. Uh, you have the Silar engine, remember, it's a small, but you can, I guess you can see it. It's, you have your particle, you insert the piston, you move the piston, and so on. Uh, you, you, uh, the piston uh, uh, expands, and so on. And uh, if you look at the phase space, and this is the demon, uh, this is the particle in the horizontal axis, you have left, right, and this is the state of the demon, which has Three states, one is zero. This is not a restore to zero, but it's very similar. You have some zero state, like the demon uh, uh, waiting for, for measuring, and left and right. So here, you initially, the particle can be elsewhere and uh, uh, anywhere, and then the demon is at zero. Then you insert the piston, so the particle gets left or right, and here you measure. And here you measure, and, uh, and when you measure, uh, the demon, if gets uh, correlated with the particle. So if the particle is in left, you, the demon gets left. And if the particle is in right, the demon gets right. And then uh, here you make the, the expansion and so on. 
And in the expansion, the, the daemon is still in left right, but the particle, the particle expands, so the, the, the whole, uh, this is like the phase space of the whole, of the whole uh, setup, uh, gets bigger. The particle uh, expands to the right or to the left, depending on the, on the initial, on the outcome of the measurement. But what happens is that, yeah, we have expanded the whole thing, but now we have to go back to the original, uh, original uh, the daemon has to reset the memory. And to reset the memory, here the memory, the, 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 the daemon is left, right. To reset the memory, you have to shrink this volume. So this, this uh, eraser is like a compression in phase space. And this requires some work. KT log 2 as well. But there is a, a second misconception with Bennett's solution. People think that Bennett, ah, Bennett solved the Maxwell demon because he proved that uh, the cost is in the eraser. Uh, but this is not true. Uh, Bennett itself, himself, he said, uh, he, 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 he said that it's an alternative explanation. So uh, um, the, the, uh, the cost can be either in the measurement or in the eraser or in both. Huh? Uh, this is a paper by Fan in '96, and he, he also uh, made it more clear that uh, sometimes you can have, if, if your reference state, the difference between this picture is that the reference state is double, double the size. So here, when you reset your system, there is no, this is the eraser, you have your demo in left, right, and then you go to zero. And there is no compression because this, this volume is the same as this volume. So here, the, the compression of the phase volume is in the measurement. So here, uh, you have that uh, the cost is in the eraser, and here, the cost is in the measurement. And you can have all the combinations, and this was as well proved by Sagawa and Ueda in PRL. This, is, this paper is in the, in the list of references that you have. So uh, uh, you have all the possibilities. So the second misconception is that not necessarily erasing is. And that principle is for a very specific process where the memory has uh, uh, the same phase uh, space volume, uh, uh, the reference states, and the two states. OK, so um, uh, I will f uh, end with some experimental realization. This is in the in one as well, a figure from, the, from a, a review that we wrote, Takahiro Sagawa, Jordan Horowitz, and myself in, for Nature Physics. And you have different realizations of the Sillar engine or the Maxwell demon. This is, I, I would say, well, this is a, a, from uh, people that collaborated with media in, in ICFO. But I would say it's one of the, uh, it's, it's very clear that it's a, it's, a, it's a stellar engine in the sense that we discussed before, that uh, you have a particle with an optical trap, two optical traps, and you separate the optical traps. The particle has to make a choice, left, right, and then you adapt your protocol to, to, to end the, the stellar engine. This is with a single electron box uh, in quantum dots. And it's, uh, you have to measure if, the, if, if there is one electron in one box or there is no electrons. And then you go back. Uh, you do complete the protocol depending on the, on the. These two are really still our engines. And this is more a Maxwell demon. This is just, you have a particle, which is also a, a Brownian particle, uh, in a potential, like, uh, uh, in, a, in a potential, and then. Uh, you measure where the particle is and you put a barrier. If the particle moves up, you put a barrier, and if the particle gets, uh, moves up, you put a barrier, and so on. Okay, so this is the um, story, and, uh, and also it, it, it was like a kind of introduction to, to what we are going to, uh, to study these two days. And uh, I want first to tell you that the, the problem of thermodynamics of information can be split into two almost separate, uh, um, separate um, problems. One is to incorporate uh, information to the second law. So we know that uh, if you have information, uh, you reduce the uncertainty of your system, and then you can get more energy than if you don't know. So if, uh, the first problem is to incorporate information to the second law. But you don't care about what, how to restore the second law or if the demon has 
some cost or whatever. You just, uh, you just want to know how the second law changes. And this is already useful because you can do a lot of things like optimizing Maxwell, optimizing protocols to get the maximum amount of, of energy from a given information and so on. And the second problem, which is harder, is to, uh, to analyze the physical nature of the demon. This is in the, in the Bennett's uh, uh, spirit, the physical nature of the demon, and uh, uh, quantify the thermodynamic cost of, of the eraser or measurement or whatever. And then by doing that, we should restore the validity of the original second law with no information appearing in the second law. So the first thing is to correct the second law to include information. And the second part is to uh, uh, prove that this correction is actually physical uh, uh, entropy and restore the original second law. This is, going, this is what we are going to do in, in tomorrow we will look, talk about this one and on Wednesday we will talk about this one probably. Okay, so uh, with that, let's go to the, um, in the last half an hour, let's go to the second point, which is the, uh, now it's going to be more like a class. And, um, And uh, I will start with the second point. The second point is uh, basic concepts. This was a little bit longer than what I expected. Basic concepts in information theory, mainly. And Well, I will not use it. If it's okay. We we can you can switch it off if you like. And uh, we will. I will present here the basic mathematical concepts that uh, we are going to use uh, along the course. So the first one is entropy. And uh, I guess uh, well. It's, uh, we will introduce Shannon entropy. Which is also called uncertainty. It's the uncertainty of random variable. So for a random variable, you have a random variable uh, with some distribution uh, P of X. And then uh, the Shannon entropy is P log P. And this sum can be as well as an integral if you, uh, if, uh, if this is continuous, it can be an integral. And uh, yeah, it can be an integral. So, well, I guess everybody knows this. Uh, just to remind you uh, an important uh, uh, interpretation of the, of the Shannon entropy. The Shannon entropy is essentially the number of zeros, of, of bits, of zeros and one that you need to uh, describe x. So x is a random variable. If, if I get my random variable from, uh, from, from some experiment, from uh, coins or dice or whatever, uh, and I want to describe it to you, the outcome, I need in average h bits to describe the, the So um, and from Shannon entropy, we we get or um, we also uh, we will use uh, this this notation, which comes from uh, information theory for the Shannon H, and uh, for we we will use S when is the Shannon entropy. This is, by the way, this is in nuts. 
I don't know if you are familiar, but uh, when the Shannon entropy is calculated with uh, binary logarithm is in bits, the unit is bits, and with it is with a natural logarithm is in, is the, we call it nat. It's just a factor between the two. And if, you, if we add the Boltzmann constant, Then we, uh, then we get this, it's, it's a, again a different unit, it's, a, it's the Shannon entropy in units of physical entropy. We, I will refrain to call this a physical entropy, this is just the Shannon entropy in units of physical entropy. And I, as I said, I will refrain to call this um, uh, a physical entropy because um, for non-equilibrium uh, states, sorry, this sometimes I will use rho and, and p. For physical systems, I will use rho, and p is for any random variable, like the outcome of a measurement and so on. But I will use p and rho in, a, in uh, I mean, in the two. And uh, if rho is equilibrium, by equilibrium I mean here uh, the, the um, here hx, sorry for the confusion, this is the Hamiltonian. and x is the physical state. Okay, in this case, well, you can prove it's very easy to uh, see that uh, when you take the logarithm of this, you get minus, which with this minus, you, you get minus k, and here minus beta, and then, this h, which is the average of the energy, and then uh, minus log of the partition function, and because beta is one over kt, well, uh, here you get that uh, this is And uh, remember that free energy is minus kt log of the partition function. This is the free energy. So with this you get here as well minus the free energy. I would call this the equilibrium free energy. So from that you get that the equilibrium free energy is the energy minus Gs. So for equilibrium uh, systems, the entropy, the Shannon entropy is really the uh, entropy that uh, we are, uh, the physical entropy. So, in equilibrium. Far from equilibrium is not, there are not so uh, um, much agreement that uh, you can use uh, uh, entropy Shannon entropy as a, as a, as a, 
thermodynamic quantity, let's say, out of equilibrium. So we will use this only in equilibrium. Although there are more, there are more and more reasons recently that tells you that you can extend this to non-equilibrium, but uh, still I will not be 100% uh, confident that uh, you can do it. Or at least you, can have, you have to look at each situation in detail. Okay, this is uh, the first one. The second one that we are going to use extensively is mutual information. which is um, the following. Here you have uh, X and Y uh, random variables. And I have uh, PX, I have, uh, they can be correlated, so they are distributed like PXY. Uh, you can define the marginals. The marginal of PX is uh, the sum of our y of py, and the same for y. To be rigorous, we should put here an index uh, x and y to, I mean, to be really rigorous, we should do the following. We have to do like that. To, because otherwise p of x is, the same as p of y without x and y are dummy variables. So this tells you the distribution uh, of x is p sub x and p sub i. In physics, we sometimes because this is a this is a kind of redundant. We use we we omit this one, and I will omit it many times. But uh, sometimes it's good to keep it. Okay. So the mutual information is defined as the following. It's uh, called like that. Um, this, all these quantities can be extended to quantum, uh, quantum systems, and uh, I guess in other courses you will see this as uh, this is the definition, and if you remember the, so I, I will omit the, 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 these sub-indexes here. And if you uh, remember the definition of the, of the conditional probability, this is the conditional probability, for instance, if I get this divided by this, is the conditional probability of uh, x given y. So I can write this as well. and the symmetric thing for the And um, this is called the conditional probability. Sorry, this is uh, the, Shannon, the Shannon entropy for, um, You can define the Shannon entropy of the conditional, let me do like that. Uh, for the conditional probability, this will be the Shannon entropy of x given y. Now if you average over y, you get a, uh, this object, which is called the conditional channel entropy, which is if, if, if I give you y, is the, the uncertainty of x if I give you y, but average over all the possible values of y. Uh, so if you include uh, this here, sorry, can I? I have problems to localize people because I don't. That's it. Given 
Which one? P of x given y. This is the this is the this is let's say the the uh, conditional for a given value of y, and now I average over all the values of y, and then I get that. And this allows me to write the the the. Um, by the way, this is the this is the number of bits. Do you remember the Shannon Shannon entropy is very the best way to to think about it is is the number of bits to describe x. So h of x is the number of bits to describe x. The conditional is the number of bits to describe x when I know y. If I know y, how many bits do I need to describe x? Hmm? How? How does one come uh, to that interpretation? How does one connect uh, that thing to that? Uh, well, uh, you can prove. Um, this is a nice uh, exercise if you can do it. You can prove that if you ask questions, so suppose that I have x and I, it's, you have to guess x, no? and you ask me questions, yes or no questions, binary questions. It can be seen that uh, uh, this, is an, this is an exercise that you can do that uh, the reduction, um, uh, well, once you, um, ask a question, the Shannon entropy is reduced. Let's say that this is uh, after the question, and this is before. Uh, it's, it's reduced by the, the information of the, of the uncertainty of the answer. You can prove this. It's in my notes, the, the notes are more detailed, and you can see this. But this is a nice exercise. You can prove that if there is a random variable, no, with some Shannon entropy. Now you ask a question about the variable. A yes, no question, or well, any questions actually. And now you ask uh, what is the. Actually, we will see this in a moment. Uh, and now, because of this, of the answer of this question, you have your uncertainty is less. The entropy is less, and the reduction is precisely the information provided. So now, if this is if this is uh, one bit, now suppose this is one bit. Every question reduces by one bit. So if I have an uncertainty of five bits, I need five questions. And if I have ten bits, I have ten questions, which are ten zeros and one. This is a nice way of interpreting. Um, uh, maybe in the tutorial we can. Uh, discuss this, because I don't know if this is very well known for everybody, or it's, it's, it's good to go through all these details, yeah? It's good. Okay, so uh, mutual information. Mutual information uh, is, uh, mutual information is this thing, and now, uh, if, if I can uh, split this logarithm into two terms, logarithm of the conditional minus logarithm of the probability, the logarithm of the conditional times this one gives me the uh, hxi with a minus, and the rest, the logarithm of px times this, if I sum over uh, uh, y and x, I get the Shannon entropy of x. So I have this nice formula that it's a good interpretation of the mutual information. Because this is the number of bits that I need to describe x, and this is the number of bits that I need to describe x if I know y, hmm? which are less. This is, this is always bigger than zero. And this is the number of bits I saved, let's say, Uh, to describe x, I don't know if this is correct English, if I know y. So when, when, when I know y, I, I, I need less, less uh, 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 bits, and this reduction of bits 
due to the information that of y is the mutual information. Of course, I can do the same with. Uh, is, uh, I, 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 I got this, this decomposition because I, I, I replaced this by the conditional entropy, but now I can do the same with these two. And I get, it's completely symmetric. The mutual information is symmetric under the two. So I get as well this formula. And another formula that is interesting is that, so this is the number of bits that I save to describe y if I know x. And another interesting formula is if I, uh, this p log p x gives me the Shannon entropy of x. Well, first, this log this gives me the Shannon entropy of the two variables. And this times this is the Shannon entropy of x and the Shannon entropy of y. This is, if you are not familiar with, uh, with these concepts, all these formulas, this is good to do as an exercise. It's not in the set of exercises, but you can, do, you can try to prove this as an exercise. And it's just one line, but uh, it's good to prove as, as an exercise. And this gives you another interpretation, which is, um, well, this is very similar to this. This is the number of bits that I need to describe x and y if, if I ignore correlation between the two. So I describe x and I describe y. And this is the sum, no? This is the, the number of bits to describe x and y ignoring correlations. And this is the number of bits taken into account correlation. So the mutual information is as well the, the, the bits that I um, uh, save if I include the correlations in my description. And you see this with some examples. It's, uh, it's, uh, for instance, if x and y are independent, Well, you can see that then they factorize, and this is equal to this, so this is zero. And the other limiting case is when the, suppose that y is a function, y is a function of x. Then, well, it's, uh, it's easy to see that uh, the conditional entropy of y given x is 0, because if I know x, I know y. Not the other way around, because f is not necessarily 1 to 1. So, but if, if y is a function of x, if I know x, I know y. So this is 0. And then the, and then the mutual information. Uh, you go here to this formula, and then it's HY. It will be important in measurements, because if measurement is, measurement is like, a, 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 in measurements we will have a mutual information between what we want to measure and the outcome of the measurement. And if the measurement is, is uh, error-free measurement, we will have that the mutual information is the Shannon entropy. Then? Extensive. Extensive. Uh, what, uh, what would be extensive? The entropy is extensive quantity, means it quantity is more than it. Yeah, of course, extensivity of Shannon entropy is, is, is true only if the systems are, uh, the correlations are not uh, long range. 
this is in, in statistical mechanics, we know that uh, if you have uh, long range correlations, then the, the entropy is not, a, is not extensive. So in this sense, uh, you need, yeah, you need that uh, for, for this to be, for this to be extensive, you mean you need this zero, equal zero. This is your question. Or? Ah, and this is equal to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is, you mean that this implies, this implies that h, x, y, x, x plus h, y. Yeah. This is what you mean. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is true. Yeah, this is interesting. And uh, yeah, actually we will use this thing. And um, Will it be h of x? Because y is completely determined if I know x. Yeah, it's no. h, of, h, uh, h of y. Yeah? H, h of y. y. This is interesting, yeah, because uh, you can have, um, this is, for instance, let's, let's think of a measurement, a measurement, uh, error-free measurement. In the Silar engine, for instance. So you have your, your particle here, and x is the position of the particle. Which can be, which would be a vector inside. And y, suppose that y is the outcome of the measurement. So it can be only left and right. Okay. Now, uh, y is a function of uh, y is a function of uh, x, no? Because it is is, is uh, left if x is in left, and right if x is in right. Okay. So in this case, uh, the uh, information of the outcome. Let me call. I will call this m, the measurement. Let me call it like that. Uh, what is the mutual information between the position of the particle and the outcome of the measurement is h of m. It's not h of x. h of x is very big because it's the uncertainty of the whole thing. And, uh, and h of m in the case of uh, uh, h of m in the case of uh, m, m, the probability of m is one half for m or right, and h of m is minus uh, one half log one half, one half log one half, and is uh, is log two, log two nuts or one bit. If we go back to the, so it's oh, it's the the y, yeah, which has in, in general has less entropy than x. Only if f is one to one, if f is one to one, here, then uh, the mutual information is x or y. It doesn't matter which one do you use. But this is important. Huh? This is important. Okay, in exercise number two, you have to uh, you have to calculate the mutual information for uh, for uh, uh, this situation, but with an error. So you will have an error in the in the in the measure. And with an error, you can guess that uh, you you will have a probability distribution like that, and this will not be so easy. Okay, the last concept. The last concept is the, or I want to, yeah, the last concept is a, a relative entropy.
and relative entropy Relative entropy is defined for a single random variable. But uh, this random variable can be, uh, can be distributed. There are two possible probability distributions for this random variable. So you have uh, two probability distributions. Uh, one is P of X, and the other is Q of X. So uh, the relative entropy is defined as this. This. And it's called relative entropy. It's called also Kullback uh, cool Leibler divergence, and also Kullback cool Leibler distance. Because it's it's a measure of how different the two probability distributions are. Uh, this is always positive. And it's zero only if uh, P is equal to Q. This is uh, inter the, the first, if, we could say these properties. This is the first one. The second one is that, uh, well, the second one is not a property, but it's a relationship between the two quantities that we have defined. And this that uh, the mutual information you see that it it's, it's has this form of the log of some ratio. It's the distance between the, the um, joint distribution and the factorized distribution. This is why uh, the, the relative entropy is like how different two pr probabilities are, and the mutual information is how different is the real one, Px, the joint, how different is from the factorized marginal. Are you calling this thing a distance? Yeah, and, and of, it's called a distance because it's like the distance between two objects. It doesn't look symmetric at least. But it's not symmetric. This is a, it's not symmetric. This is the third property. And there is no, uh, it's not symmetric, so it's not a distance in this mathematical sense. It, it doesn't obey the tri triangular uh, inequality, so it's not really a distance. From this uh, quantity, you can, con you can construct some distances, uh, real distances, but uh, this is not a distance. But it is, this is why some, sometimes it's called divergence as well. And finally, the, the, the final property is the Steiner's lemma. This tells you why the, the relative entropy is a, is a measure of distinguishability. Suppose that I have x. I give you x uh, realizations of x. So I have a random variable. And, but this random variable, you don't know the, what is the distribution. And, and, and there are two possible candidates. Suppose that one is I get. I, I get a number between 2 and 12 using dice or using a lottery. No? And I give you the numbers. So you start to receive the numbers, and, uh, and I do have to guess if the numbers are obtained by a lottery or by dice. Of course, the best thing is to calculate the frequency of, of outcomes, 
And if it is uniform, it's a lottery. And if it is, a, uh, if it is picked around seven, it's a, it's a, it's a dice. But Steiner's lemma quantifies this. What is the probability to confuse, I mean, to guess P, P when the true is Q? So this is the probability to guess Q. Sorry, it's guess. Uh, that's the last thing, and I, I'm done. Um, To mistake P for Q, so uh, or guess uh, Q when the true when the true probability distribution is P. So uh, of course, when I give you a lot of data, this will this probability of error will decrease. This is a narrow probability. And uh, uh, Steiner lemma tells you that this is exponential of minus n d p q. So if you like, um, yeah, this is uh, the 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 number of uh, of data that I need to really distinguish. Well. Let's say that the error probability goes down with, uh, with the number of data. But if d is very small, if d is 0, it, it doesn't really go down because I cannot distinguish between p and q. And if d is very small, then it, it is, uh, it, I would need uh, much more data to do so. OK, I see that not everybody is familiar with the size of the data. Huh? E is the size of the data. E is number, no, E. e. E is the number E. N, N, N. N is the number of data. See, uh, prior, uh, uh, N data are given. If, let's say, if N data are given. Well, this is a very fast uh, review of uh, the three main concepts, Shannon entropy, mutual information, and relative entropy. If you want to know more, the, the best book uh, uh, for information theory is uh, uh, written by Cover and Thomas. And uh, here you have a lot of information of all this. I think it's introduction to information theory. And as I said before, uh, all these concepts have a counterpart in quantum mechanics. So you have a quantum relative entropy, a quantum Shannon entropy, which is called von Neumann entropy, and also uh, quantum mutual information uh, for density matrices. And probably in other courses, you will see something like that. OK, sorry for being.